Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm a writer on Wattpad. My mom is a total Karen. I even write stories about her on my Wattpad. This is until my stories got discovered and all hell broke loose. One day, I was in the cafe and I looked at the cute guy who was walking over to me with my milkshake. As he handed me my drink, he said, Um, here you go, gorgeous. I could not believe my ears. Did Tyler, my crush since kindergarten, just call me gorgeous? But before he could say another word, a shrill voice echoed in the cafe. Where is your manager? This coffee is too hot! I want to speak to your manager! I sunk back in my chair while the raging Karen unleashed her fury on poor Tyler. I'd seen this too many times. She really was as crazy as I made her in my stories. I told mom to back off. She turned to me with blazing eyes. No daughter of mine will talk back to me like that because of some loser waiter. Oh no! I looked at Tyler in horror. I thought the worst of that night was watching my crush stare at me like I was a monster. But boy, was I wrong. When I got to school the next day, everyone was looking at me weirdly and some kids were pointing at me. Suddenly, my phone pinged and I nearly dropped it when I saw the message. Someone had recorded mom that night and the video had gone viral. When I finally saw Susie, my best friend in the cafeteria, she ran to me and hugged me. Kristen, I'm so sorry. It'll blow over soon. But it didn't. When I got home that afternoon, ready to go off on mom, she looked furious and pushed a pile of papers into my hand. As I read them, I almost passed out. They were printouts of my stories. I can explain. It's not you. It's... Suddenly, she pulled me into a hug and yelled, We're famous, Kersey! You genius! What do you mean? A famous producer watched the video and saw how people loved to hate me and thought Tyler and you looked cute. Then he found your stories, and now they want us to do a reality show based on your stories. I could not believe my ears. I'd be the star of my own stories? And if Tyler agreed to be in it, maybe I'd have another chance with him. I rushed over to the place he was working at. Tyler, we need to talk! But just then... He dropped to his knee. I want to be your boyfriend. I could not believe my ears. Yes, yes, of course, Tyler. I'd like nothing more. He laughed and jumped to his feet and hugged me. This was perfect. This was cut. Immediately, Tyler let go of me. Wasn't I just brilliant, babe? What do you mean? A funny little man and a camera crew rushed out yelling, You're a natural. I love that you don't even need the script. Just then, I saw the camera crew, and suddenly everything made sense. Clearly, the director had already approached Tyler. Tyler turned to me and grinned. Not that difficult to pretend to be in love with you, beautiful. My heart raced at that. Did he actually like me? The next few weeks were whack. I had a camera crew follow me everywhere, and they chose everything and everyone around me. When we walked into math class, the director looked up and down at the teacher. He just picked up his phone and said, No, no, this won't do. And seconds later, a super hot guy, introduced as our new teacher, came in and started playing with a calculator. I was so relieved when the class ended, and I finally met up with Susie. But when I hugged her, she pushed me away. Is this all your life is about now? The fame and fake people? Gosh, was my best friend jealous of me? But before I could reply, my phone pinged. Tyler had texted. They're ready for the take. I jumped to my feet and grabbed my stuff. We'll talk about this later, okay? To be honest, I was having the time of my life. Not only did I have the best boyfriend ever, but also everyone wanted to be friends with me. The only thing I really wanted was for Susie to be on the show too. But the director refused because he said she wasn't pretty enough. So they had a model replace her. After that, things just went downhill. One day, I was at the cafeteria when Susie plopped next to me. I was thrilled to see her. I miss you, Chris. You never have time for me now. Before I could reply, the model who was playing my best friend got up and splashed cold water all over Susie. Oops, sorry. Chris, you should probably get away from her. She'll mess up that gorgeous outfit. I jumped to my feet. Hey! But suddenly, the director grabbed my arm and dragged me away. I turned back to see Susie sitting there looking heartbroken. I was the worst best friend ever. Just send her chocolates or something. We don't have time for her moping. Just then, someone yelled, there's another Karen attack. I rushed outside with everyone else 
to see Mom was yelling at a teacher. You made a spelling mistake of my little girl's name. I demand to see the principal. What was happening? I ran over to her and pulled her away from the poor teacher. Mom, what are you doing? She quickly whispered into my ear. I'm improvising. I took a look around and sure enough, the cameras were rolling and everyone was laughing. I felt humiliated. I began to yell. Just stop it. I quit! And then I turned around and ran. I just had to get away from this all. Suddenly, I heard Tyler calling my name. Leave me alone, Tyler. I don't want to be a laughing stock. He caught up with me and pulled me into a hug. I looked around suspiciously. Don't worry, there are no cameras. After a minute, he asked, Are are you really quitting? I nodded my head while sobbing. He said, You you can't quit. He shifted uneasily before bursting into tears. Babe, I need to be in the show for a reason. Yes, to become rich and famous. <clears throat> no, I need the money. I need it for my mom. She is really ill. Oh my god, Tyler. You guys and all your lies. Yes, girls are emotional, but not dumb. Oh, God, that hurts. I didn't know you were so heartless. (laughs) Here, look at this. Does she look fine to you? Oh, my God, I'm really sorry. Yeah, I feel terrible now. You should. Okay, I'm in. I'm not leaving the show. Please don't hate me. I'll try. And before I knew it, he kissed me. Fireworks erupted in my head. As I kissed him back, suddenly we heard loud applause and the director jumped out from behind the bushes. Brilliant! We just got the kiss, but it was brilliant! Good job bringing this Karen around, Tyler. What? Again? I messaged Susie asking her to meet me at a cafe the next day. I'd been feeling terrible and I needed to make it up to her. But the next day, by the time I got free, I was already late because of the shoot. When I got there, she seemed furious and was just getting up to leave. I tried explaining it was an emergency. She simply showed me her phone screen with all the posts from the shoot. I never thought I'd say this, but you're a horrible friend, Chris. I'm a what? I just skipped a great after party for you. You're the one who's being so freaking jealous of me. Can you even pretend to be happy for me? As I realized what I'd said, I snapped shut. What was I doing? How could I say something so mean? Sue, it's great to know what you really think of your best friend. Before I could stop her and apologize, she rushed out. When I got home, my phone was blowing up with messages from Tyler. Chris, look up, daughter of Karen becomes Karen. I did, and what I saw made me drop my phone in horror. It was a video of me yelling at Susie. Then the producers called. The stats are in, Kirsten, and the producers love Susie. He said he was changing my script and had decided that Susie and Tyler would date while I was the crazy ex. I've even fired the model who was playing her. The producers love her. I was reluctant, but then I thought of Tyler and his mom and changed my mind. Fine, I'll do it. It would all be just fake. Nothing would change, right? Wrong. Suddenly, not only was Susie totally avoiding me, but also I was exactly what I had always been terrified of becoming, a Karen. To make matters worse, Tyler and all my other friends started to disappear. I wasn't being invited to parties, and the models and kids all started hanging out with Susie. One evening, I woke up from a nap and was surprised to find Mom and all the regular camera crew missing. I checked my phone, and what I saw left me devastated. Everyone's stories were full of pictures and videos from a party. Just then I remembered it was Susie's birthday. Was she really not inviting me? I felt devastated. I grabbed all the things she'd ever given me and rushed over to her house. The security guy stopped me and said I couldn't go in. That's when I really lost it. I started to throw everything I'd brought into her yard. Take this, you good-for-nothing friend! And this! I hate you! Just then, the gate flew open and Mom walked out. She dragged me inside the house and glared at me. Just what are you doing? Me? What are you doing here? I was here for Susie's birthday, of course. Mom! How could you even be here if I'm not invited? Well, everyone was. I wasn't going to miss it because you've been stupid. Before I knew it, all my anger was pouring out right there. You're the one always embarrassing yourself in public trying to steal my show. 
Your show? The show exists because of me. It's my show. Suddenly, I realized she was right. It was her show. And it existed with the sole purpose of making us laughingstocks. They'd even changed my script and taken over all my life. I was trapped in my own story, and I'd hurt my friend in the process. You're right, Mom. The show is yours. And it's your world, not mine. I'm not some stupid Karen. I really quit. Then I ran past her into the house. I had an apology to make. But just before I entered, I heard Tyler say, Mom would love to take you to Paris this weekend. I barged into her room. Susie and Tyler were kissing. And there was no camera crew. They were kissing for real. Tyler, what's going on? Why are you kissing her? And why is your ill and poor mom taking her to Paris? Ugh, who else would my boyfriend kiss? The color drained from Tyler's face. Oh, babe, I can explain. She kissed me. Explain this, you cheater. And I threw a glass of soda from the nearby table at him. Then I turned to Susie. I never thought you'd stoop so low and kiss my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? What are you? Oh, don't pretend. You can keep this loser. I'm out of here. With that, I turned and stormed out. I couldn't believe Tyler had been stringing me along for such a long time just to be famous. There was only one way to end this. I decided to call the producers to end this. Just as I was about to do that, Mom opened the door and said Susie was here to see me. I don't want to, but Susie pushed the door and came in. She started to cry and said, I've broken up with him, Chris. He swore you two weren't dating. I've left the show, too. I don't want to do it at the cost of our friendship. I could tell she was serious. I found myself crying with her. I'm sorry for hurting you too, Susie. I got carried away. I missed you so much. I'm done with this stupid show. Immediately, Mom started yelling at us. What do you mean you're done, huh? You can't. It's my money too. But we ignored her as we both talked to the producers. We told them that they couldn't produce the show or we would sue them for making us go through this stressful and hard time. The producers decided to not air the show eventually. Mom went crazy and became more and more of a Karen. What I learned from all of this is that you can be a Karen without knowing you are a Karen. So take this advice from me. After you like this video, go ask your friends if you are a Karen or not and tell us what they said in the comments. Hi, my name is Tiara, and My Story Animated will give $1,000 to one lucky person who subscribes in the next seven days. Tell your friends, your sister, brother, and mom to subscribe now. The first time mom realized that I was really shy was when I was four years old and she took me to the amusement park. I was terrified. I just kept my eyes on my shoes and clung onto my mom's hand tight the whole time. You see, I just wasn't used to a lot of people, so I'd completely freak out around strangers. Once, when I was five, I was busy taking down a cereal box from the shelf of a grocery store, and when I turned around, mom was gone. I felt panic rise in my chest, and I started running down the aisle. Just then, a strange woman caught my hand. Hey, pretty girl, are you lost? What's your name? I stared at her in horror, completely speechless. Just then, I saw mom running towards me and I went flying into her arms. The woman turned to mom. Oh, I'm so sorry. It must be really hard having a mute child. Does she go to a special school? Mom snapped at her to mind her own business and we walked off quickly. But the next evening, when I went down for dinner, I saw a grumpy looking man at the table and I froze. Hey, sweetie, it's okay. I want you to get comfortable around new people. So I thought I'd introduce you to my very special friend. I was five, not stupid. I knew he was her boyfriend. Did she seriously think bringing a boyfriend would help me with my shyness? Grumpy kept coming over every day, and I didn't get comfortable around him because he was a pain in the butt. Luckily, I caught him stealing money from mom's bag one day, and she went ballistic and threw him out. I started school later that year, and mom thought that would help me overcome my shyness, but it didn't. I was terrified on the first day, so the teacher allowed mom to sit in class, and I felt much better. But when I was walking into class without her the next day, I immediately got hit by a paper ball in the face. It was Bridget, the meanest girl in class. <laughs> Yo, mama's girl, who's gonna change your diaper now? 
The title Mama's Girl stuck for a while, but after some bullying, Bridget and her minions got bored and I became invisible. Even though I had no friends, I didn't hate school because I really loved to learn, so I started spending all my free time in the library. One day, when I was in the second grade, I found a boy my age in my usual spot. I wanted to talk to him, but I felt shy, so I just sat down at the same table and gave him a smile. He smiled back, scribbled something on a notebook, and pushed it towards me. Hi, I'm Ethan. It's nice to meet you. Was he shy like me and couldn't talk to strangers? I thought this note system was way cooler anyway. We exchanged notes all during recess, and it was the best time I'd ever had at school. One day, I followed the boy to his class, and all the kids welcomed me with waves and smiles. Wow, who were these angels? Just then the teacher came in and she started using her hands to make all sorts of signs. It looked so funny I started laughing. That's when she noticed me. Sweetie, can you hear what I'm saying? I nodded my head. Then you're not supposed to be here. And that's when I realized that Ethan and all the other kids here were deaf. And this was a special class. It was really sad to go, but Ethan slipped me a note. See you at the library tomorrow? And I did. Every single day after that. We only ever hung out together in the library, though. I felt protective of Ethan and wanted to keep him out of Bridget's face. And finally, I had a best friend, but I never invited him home because mom could be super embarrassing. Over the next few years, she had a string of stupid boyfriends at our place. She was also just always doing odd jobs, and we never seemed to have enough money. One day in ninth grade, I went to get lunch at the cafeteria and almost jumped back in shock to see mom behind the counter. Mom, what are you doing here? Sweetie, I work here now. Can you chit-chat with your lunch lady friend later, Tiara? I don't have all day. I turned around to see Bridget behind me, and as I started walking away, I suddenly heard her scream. OMG, you stupid woman! You poured hot soup all over my new iPhone! I turned around to see Mom looking red in the face and apologizing to that brat. I'm so sorry. It's only my first day here. Do you need a degree to be a lunch lady? Because you must have failed lunch lady school for sure. Show me your degree. I'd just had enough. Didn't your nannies teach you any manners? She's working hard to serve lunch to hundreds of kids, and she made a mistake. Have some respect. Oh my. Look who finally found a voice. Who are you? Martin Luther King now? And why do you care about the dumb lunch lady? Is she your mom? Yeah, actually, she is. As everyone suddenly stared at me in silence, Bridget burst out laughing. <laughs> so, you're still a mama's girl? And now I get why you're so stupid. I was about to attack her, but just then I saw Ethan walking towards us with the principal. Bridget, how dare you talk to a staff member like that? That's a three-day suspension. To my office. Now. As Bridget walked away looking furious, I knew I'd pay for it later. But standing up to her felt so good. Later that day, when we were hanging out, Ethan said, You were awesome for standing up to that bully. And your mom seems nice. And you were awesome for calling the principal just in time. And well, mom's a bit crazy. What's yours like? And then Ethan told me that his mom had died when he was little, and his dad was a big businessman who was mostly away. He'd provided plenty of servants to take care of Ethan, but he never had much time for him. Sometimes, I think he must be disappointed to have someone like me as a son. That just broke my heart. I'd been waiting to surprise Ethan with the secret sign language lessons I'd been taking, but I couldn't wait any longer. I'm sure that's not true, Ethan, because you're the loveliest person I've ever met. He stared at me in complete surprise, and suddenly his face broke into a huge smile. Then he pulled me close and kissed me. We started going out, and after a few months, I finally decided to introduce him to Mom. The dinner went well, but when Ethan took the dishes to the kitchen, Mom turned to me. What are you doing with that boy, Tiara? What do you mean, Mom? I mean, look at you. You're smart and beautiful. You could have any guy you want. Why would you choose someone who's deaf? Her words made my blood boil. Mom, would you like it if I was deaf and no one wanted to date me? But you're not deaf. He is. He's not good enough for my perfect girl. Stop saying such awful things, Mom. It's not like he can hear me, honey. Just then, to my horror, I turned to see Ethan standing in the doorway. He just looked at me once and left. I turned to Mom, furious. He can read lips, Mom. That was cruel, and I couldn't care less about Ethan's hearing. 
It doesn't make him less kind or caring or smart. He's perfect, unlike the jerks you date. And with that, I stormed off to my room. Ethan wouldn't reply to any of my texts, and the next day at school, I looked for him everywhere. Eventually, I found him sitting alone on the bleachers outside. Ethan, I'm so sorry about what Mom said. He shook my hand off angrily. She's right, Tiara. You're perfect, and I'm not. I'm sure you've thought about that, too. Why else would you always keep our friendship a secret? And with that, he walked off. But I wasn't going to let him go so easily. I ran to the art room and wrote something on a chart paper, and at recess, I went to the cafeteria and jumped onto the table. I felt really nervous as everyone's eyes turned to me, but I only had eyes for Ethan as I held up the chart. Ethan, I love you more than chocolate cake. Will you do me the honor of being my prom date? Ethan burst out laughing and ran to hug me. As we kissed, the whole cafeteria erupted into cheers and applause. The next day, when Ethan and I were leaving school, we suddenly got hit by paper balls. Remember how you were such a little scaredy cat that you couldn't even speak, Tiara? And now you have a boyfriend just like yourself. He's only with you because there's something wrong with him, <laughs> obviously. I was about to lash out at her when suddenly... A limousine stopped next to us and a well-dressed man came out. I was surprised when Ethan hugged him and told me he was his dad. Ethan's dad turned to me. I haven't been around much, but Ethan told me all about you and how you've changed his life. And I just wanted to show you how grateful I am. Hey, you, give her the present. Just then, his bodyguard leapt forward and handed me a small box. When I opened it, I gasped. It was a diamond tennis bracelet. I, I can't accept this, sir. But Ethan's dad wouldn't hear a word and just left. As Ethan clipped the bracelet onto my wrist, I could see Bridget's open-mouthed face turning all shades of green, and that was truly priceless. After that day, Bridget was always trying to get close to Ethan. I'd often catch her trying to talk to him at recess or in the library, where she'd probably never set foot in her life before. On prom day, I was getting asked to dance by lots of guys, and Ethan smiled at me to go ahead. When I stopped to catch my breath and looked around for him, I spotted Bridget cozying up to Ethan. I think you and I would make a really cute couple. Oh, wait, you can't hear me? Let me show you how I feel about you. And with that, she grabbed his face and kissed him. Before I could pull her hair, Ethan had already pushed her aside and he looked really angry. And then, Bridget went totally mental on him. Seriously? You're rejecting me? You think I'd actually ever be interested in someone stupid and deaf like you? And I'd have to learn dumb signs to explain everything to you? I'd rather shoot myself in the head. By now, I'd walked over to her and given her a tight slap across the face, and everyone started booing her so she left the prom. But someone did something even better. A girl had made a video of the entire scene and uploaded it online. And thousands of people were now calling out Bridget for bullying someone differently abled. And the best part? She was expelled from school. And a year after graduation, Ethan published a groundbreaking paper that got published in a very prestigious science journal. When it came out, he left a copy for me at the breakfast table. As my eyes fell on the first page, I started to cry. Dedicated to my best friend and the love of my life, Tiara, the girl who saw me when I was invisible. And that night when he came home, I had a little scrapbook I'd made waiting for him at the table. When he saw it, his eyes started to well up. Inside the scrapbook was every note we'd ever written to each other. Ever since that first day in the library, I'd saved them all. He turned to me and I went down on one knee. I knew you were someone special from the very first moment I saw you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, Ethan. Will you marry me? He said yes and made me feel like the luckiest girl in the world. Months later, I invited mom to the wedding and she did come. And she actually apologized to both me and Ethan. I thought life might be hard for you with a differently abled person, but I was wrong. I'm so happy to see how happy he makes you. And when we signed our vows, Mom almost ruined our perfect moment by crying the loudest. We have two lovely kids now who are perfectly fluent in sign language, of course. I hope having Ethan for a dad makes them even more compassionate towards